Hi, everyone. This is Dan just here uh, talking to my good pal, Ricky. Uh, and he's going to show me uh, how to crack a password. Say hello, Ricky. How's it going? Ricky, what can you tell us about yourself? I, I am a systems administrator with some emphasis on security, uh, including a security certification. Nothing special. This stuff is pretty easy, actually. Ricky, we've set up some user accounts with a variety of passwords that you can all see uh, next to this video. And Ricky, you're going to show us how quick and easy it is to crack these on a not so fancy computer system. This computer system is probably no better suited to cracking passwords than yours is. A system, even a the system where you drop like five or six hundred bucks into optimizing it would be orders of magnitude, think thousands of times faster. Um, but it, in many of these cases, it doesn't really matter that much. So, this one's going to take a little longer. Uh, just keep in mind when I say orders of magnitude, this will take like maybe three minutes on my computer, but would take maybe three seconds. I'm making up numbers a little bit, but it'd be really, really fast um, on specialized hardware and not even expensive uh, specialized hardware. So we're going to do a brute force attack on this user. You're, you're talking about specialized hardware. And um, what you're saying is that's relatively inexpensive for a determined hacker, right? Oh, yeah. Actually, a lot of people just use uh, gaming graphics cards. So there we have it. In how much time do you think that was that it took it to oh. crack just a, a simple string of letters and a number? Two or three minutes. And uh, again, it would be seconds, not minutes on good hardware. Start with uh, what's called dictionary uh, attack. And if you look over here where it says NT hash, this is an obfuscated version of your password. Um, it should be that after going through a mathematical algorithm, your password will match this, and only your password will match this. When it comes to creating a password, uh, a hacker, uh, someone who's trying to crack passwords, is going to be using these dictionary lists and they're also they could also be pulling from uh, Wikipedia, or they could be they could pull in the Holy Quran and Bible verses and and use those as part of their dictionary, right? Absolutely. And another, the probably the most common one is uh, passwords that have already been cracked or leaked. So LinkedIn, for example, uh, because of data breaches, just just don't reuse passwords because you don't want your LinkedIn account to get hacked and then your school account, your work account, uh, your bank account to all of a sudden have the actual honest to God plain text password out there on the internet. This will just take a second. So this is using dictionaries that just two dictionaries, uh, one with the most common or well, thousand most common passwords. And the right. other one has just a list of dictionary words. Yes. And of course, if I was in a real world situation, I would have leaked password lists, song lyrics, you know, Wikipedia, Russian dictionary, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And there, um, I would um, also be able to generate word lists. Uh, there's an application called Cup with two Ps. Uh, that I can use, and it's like, hey, what's your target's address? What's your target's phone numbers? What's the kids' names of important people in the company? What are names of important people in the company? That sort of thing, and then it spits out uh, word lists. And of our four passwords that we've used, the brute force found the first one uh, in what would have been a matter of seconds. And then I noticed that these two passwords, the dictionary attack was able to find very quickly, even though we're using number substitution in that second one. People need to realize that that substitute password looks like it's an OK password, but it's actually worse than a six character random password. So even if we had used symbols as well, like put an exclamation point for the L instead of a one, um, we would probably be seeing on um, a higher performing hardware 
a similar result very quick. Oh, oh yeah, it wouldn't make any difference. Numbers aren't special, at symbols, et cetera, just as bad. If it's predictable, if it's something that reminds a human being of the character that it's substituting for, then it, it's not going to provide much protection from a hacker. What are some examples of the worst passwords you've seen? Colorado 1 and everything else, Colorado 2 through 99, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, Pikes Peak 1 through 99, or just Pikes Peak. The other really common one in organizations that require password resets is like uh, winter 2019, spring 2020, summer 2020. So if you've got those quarterly password resets, people use seasons all the time. Uh, but I mean, there's tons of them. John 316, I love Jesus, like religious things, uh, kids' names, uh, street names for, I've seen addresses and phone number for the Wi-Fi password is a common one. You know, that sort of thing, it, it seems like it's not that bad, but um, these tricks have been thought of. Keyboard patterns are on the bad password lists every time. In fact, there are entire rule sets dedicated to that. Uh, but another thing, uh, the, the length of a dictionary word doesn't matter. So if you have a 25 character dictionary word and you do numerical substitutions, that's just as bad as our substituted avalanche here. Um, like if, if this was a dictionary word that was 25 characters long and had nine substitutions in it, not better because it's still going to get cracked with the same exact algorithm that killed this mangled version of Avalanche. Um, song lyrics, though, we were talking about that before. Song lyrics are an interesting idea. You just have to remember that they can be in lists, and so you have to mangle them in such a way that it doesn't have predictable substitutions. I think that if you just kind of imagine how people crack passwords, I mean, it's, it's actually pretty simple. You use word lists, Brute force only works up to eight or nine characters before it becomes unfeasible. Uh, other than that, you're using some kind of rules and word list combination. The harder it is to imagine an algorithm where I say, well, I could crack this if I substitute, you know, ones for eyes and stuff like that. The harder it is to imagine that, the better your password is going to be.